Michigan voters go to the polls this November and CMU Public Broadcasting again brings you Meet the Candidates. The election year series that gives you the chance to meet those seeking state and national office. Hello and welcome to this edition of Meet the Candidates. I'm David Nicholas. We are joined this time by Jay Kahlo. He is the Democratic candidate for the 105th district seat in the Michigan House. This is an open seat for this year's election. Mr. Kahlo, thanks very much for taking the time to join thanks us. Thanks for having me, Dave. In our first few moments, we like to uh, give candidates a chance to offer up some of the personal background, hometown, the experience you bring to the Absolutely, campaign. Absolutely, sure. I'll, I'll make it a quick bio because otherwise it'll take up all your time. Uh, born and raised in the Upper Peninsula in the Iron Mountain Kingsford area and uh, went down to school at Michigan State University where I graduated in political sci with a political science degree. Um, and uh, I actually used it uh, coming out of college. I ran some political campaigns for state house members. And then I worked in the state house uh, for a two year term of Representative David Anthony, a uh, Democrat from the 108th district at the time. Uh, then I kind of made a career shift and went into teaching. I um, got my teaching degree and I taught high school history and government in Greenville, Michigan, just a bit north of Grand Rapids. Uh, then um, after five years of teaching, I uh, decided to make another career shift and now I'm in healthcare. Uh, I'm in the healthcare field and I live up in Gaylord now. And my family, my wife and two daughters, we absolutely love it up there. So. Uh, I want to run to make a difference for those people up there. District 105 that uh, we speak of uh, encompasses what? Draw for us sort of the map of that district. Five northern Michigan counties, uh, Otsego, where Gaylord is, uh, Charlevoix, Antrim, Montmorency, and Escoda. So those five uh, counties, kind of a swath uh, east to west across northern Michigan. And in those counties and uh, your time in the run-up to the campaign, the, the issues that you've identified and what the folks are telling you, the voters are telling you that they see as the key issues Absolutely. in the campaign. Absolutely. A lot of, lot of tough issues for the state of Michigan. Uh, there's uh, by no means uh, can any, you know, anyone, it's, a, it's quite a challenge to tackle a lot of these issues. But, you know, the things I've been talking about when I go door to door and uh, talk to voters are the three E's, I like to say, education, employment, and the environment. And, uh, you know, those are three things that are very important to not just northern Michigan, but all of Michigan. Um, and, and I like to say with the first one, if we do a good job of um, creating strong schools, uh, the first one will help take care of the second problem, which is employment. Uh, and then uh, lastly, the environment, which is very important that we protect the environment up in the 105th as tourism is uh, our number one industry and very important up there. So when you say strong schools, uh, many people might have different interpretations as to what that means or where they see um, perhaps concerns with deficiencies in sure. the school system. What are people telling you are, are the challenges or the concerns that they have? Uh, first of all, a lot of confusion. You're right. Uh, a lot of, you know, uh, you turn on the TV and you see a commercial for Rick Snyder saying, I added a billion dollars to education. You see a commercial for Mark Schauer saying he's subtracted a billion dollars from education. Fact is, all you have to do is look at the per pupil uh, funding uh, for, for public school students in Michigan, and you can see there is a considerable decrease from four years ago when Rick Snyder took office. Um, my number one goal is to return that funding to the school rooms. And when I say that, uh, I'm not just saying, uh, you know, throw money at a, a problem. I'm saying I know as a teacher, as a tenured uh, teacher uh, down in Greenville, uh, I know what difference uh, more funding can make uh, to a classroom. Uh, you're talking about smaller classrooms. You're talking about uh, the uh, resources to hire a teacher's aide. You're talking about my daughter who's in fifth grade, her back to school list. You know, a couple years ago it was this and then it became this and I mean just more and more resources needed because the schools aren't able to provide them. So, you know, again, that's why that's my top priority is I, I really want to find a way to get that funding back up to the levels that are appropriate. And if we do that, uh, we're going to see stronger schools. 
funding disparity between districts to the southern parts of the state and, and districts more to the north. Um, yeah. And we've got, a, we've got a funding system in play. There's a matter of the question of sure. money. There's also the question of how that money actually gets uh, figured into that formula through proposal A and, and the like. Uh, what, are, what are, from your experience and then yeah. what the voters are telling you, what yeah. do we do to fix it? it that's a great question, because you're right. There are kind of two separate issues. When I worked in the state house for Representative Anthony, that's when Proposal A was passed. Uh, I remember the debate. I was I was right there for part of it, and um, e you're right. There is a disparity uh, when you look at some of the uh, uh, upper tax bracket school systems downstate, and then you look at the school systems in the 105th district. Uh, quite a disparity. I think that's an issue that we can you know s start to work on. I don't think that's an overnight issue. I don't think that's going to be solved anytime soon. Um, but my first priority again is just returning the per-pupil funding back to where it needs to be. Uh, I, I think there's a whole nother issue with charter schools. I think those need to be uh, really looked at and worked on. Uh, there are 232 charter schools in this state. Uh, they get the same per-pupil funding for students and they don't follow the same rules as the public schools uh, do. And that just isn't fairness in my book. You said that education, the strong schools would take care or, or feed into helping uh, the employment concerns, which says trained workforce will have the people. Do we have the jobs in the northern districts, in District 105? Uh, what, is, what is the economic base? What needs to be done to help in terms of development or, or right. keeping jobs, attracting jobs to the area? Absolutely. We, we don't have the jobs. Uh, we, from time to time, we get businesses to move into northern Michigan. It's an attractive place to move, but it could be more attractive. And we make it more attractive through better educating our students. A strong anchor of a school makes for a strong community. Uh, and then higher education, uh, I was just lucky enough to tour the University Center in Gaylord, uh, which is uh, some college class extensions and an M-Tech program. They're doing great things there. I want to see more programs like that, more community college, more job training for students, um, and, and a better prepared workforce. You know, interestingly enough, um, and, you know, getting into my race a little bit personally, I live in Gaylord. Uh, back 10 years ago, there was a, a real nice paper, uh, particle board plant in Gaylor. Georgia Pacific uh, owned it. Uh, the, a thriving plant, 210 workers, and uh, a great employer for uh, the workers up there. At that same time, uh, Georgia Pacific was bought by the Coke Brothers and Coke Industries of Wichita, Kansas. And just a couple months after purchasing Georgia Pacific, they shut that plant down and uh, sent all those workers home and said, you don't have a job. You know, that's the kind of thing that is not going to help the employment system in the 105th. Coincidentally or not, coincidentally, my opponent uh, has support from the Koch brothers and specifically from Americans for Prosperity. So uh, that's a job killing plan, not a job creating plan. And I want to work on the other side of that. When it comes to the environment, all of this state reliant on, on the ecosystem, the health of the Great Lakes for the tourism, for all that it represents, what are people telling you that it represents the, the largest concern when it comes to environment of the water, the air, yeah. the outdoors that we have. Right. A lot of ancillary issues is part of the major issue. But, you know, uh, the thing I hear a lot, of course, is fracking. That's a real popular topic up there. Um, and I talk to a lot of citizens about their concerns. And right now, I don't think the state is listening to their concerns. And that's concerning to me. Uh, we need more green energy. We need to work on uh, more sustainable. Uh, energy policy, but certainly we need to look closely at uh, some of these practices uh, like fracking and um, if there's even the remote chance that they could pollute, uh, be it Lake Michigan or our rivers or streams or our land, then it's a no, it's a no go. I mean, uh, that, that is just um, un- um, undoable for, for Northern Michigan to, to even have the thought of that, so. And overall then when we look at uh, tourism as an industry, agriculture as an industry, playing into perhaps that development uh, or, or the balance between economic development, preserving land for 
uh, the natural use or agriculture. Right. Um, another one of those issues that, that comes into play. What do people tell you on that front? Uh, you know, just, again, just a balance. You know, a lot of these things are a balance. It's, uh, of course, we want industry to move uh, up to uh, northern Michigan. But then, you know, you have uh, employers up there and you hear about... Uh, um, you know, chemicals being seeping seeping into the ground because of the employer's uh, choices up there. So uh, this has to be looked at. These these corporations have to be held accountable uh, for for anything they ha have done in the past or are doing in the future. Uh, and um, there needs to be a balance there. When it comes to the area of uh, the taxation and the the regulation across the board. Uh, we could talk to another group of people that would probably say too much. Um, mm -hmm. Are people in those that you've talked to, are they saying that it's a, a matter of things are not being enforced, things are not being followed, there's not enough policy, there's too much policy, some have got to be the small business creators who may be arguing it from, from uh, another point of view as well with you. Yeah. What do they say? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. I've obviously been following Mark Schauer and some of his proposals, and, you know, uh, a lot of things I hear out on the campaign trail is, well, you have some great ideas, some great plans, how are you going to pay for it? If you look at Mark Schauer's plan, it makes a whole lot of sense. First of all, we're going to build up the economy so we have three thriving businesses, and that's going to help the tax base. But beyond that, there are so many loopholes, and when I say the word loopholes, read fraud, abuse, uh, waste of taxpayer money in dealing with uh, our corporations and our businesses. You know, the big topic uh, not too long ago before the primary election was Proposal 1, and oh, what a job creator that's going to be and how it's going to help businesses. You know, 58,000 small businesses in the state of Michigan don't even pay that personal property tax. Why? Because they've been given those uh, bonuses and they've been given that opportunity to move to the area and not pay that. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but I'm saying, you know, when they try and play on the commercials that Proposal 1 is going to benefit the small business owner, that's not who it's benefiting. It's benefiting the Dow Chemicals, the, you know, the large corporations in the state of Michigan. And they're, ha again, priorities. What are our priorities? Are our priorities to give more tax breaks to billionaires uh, or, our or are our priorities to build stronger schools, and that's mine. Just a few seconds that we have, but if you look at education, employment, environment, those main issues, to hone that down into the message you would want to leave with that voter in District 105 seeking that vote, what would that message Absolutely. be? Absolutely. My simple message would be this. No person runs for office and it takes it lightly. I mean, this is uh, dedicating over a year of my life uh, to to this office. So even my opponent, I, I give him a nod for for doing so such a thing because it's wanting to make people's lives better. But simply, I'm the most prepared for this job. Of the two people in this race, I'm the most prepared. I've worked in the State House. I've stood in front of classrooms as a tenured teacher. Uh, and I've worked in the private industry in healthcare. And I know the issues that are important. And I know how to solve them and become a, and be a leader in the House. We appreciate your time and the attention paid to the issues and uh, on behalf of the voters. And we thank you for doing that, and good luck with the rest of the campaign. Thanks. Great service you do. I appreciate it, Dave. Thank you. And thank you, as once again, for your time and attention as well here on Meet the Candidates. We've been talking with Jake Halo, the Democratic candidate for the 105th district seat in the Michigan House. We urge all of you to go out and exercise your right to vote on November 4th. Thank you for joining us for Meet the Candidates. CMU Public Broadcasting invited both major party candidates for this office to participate in this series. Remember to go to the polls on Election Day. Hello and welcome again to this edition of Meet the Candidates. I'm David Nicholas and we're joined this time by Mark Lightfoot. He is the Democratic candidate for the 97th District House seat. And uh, Mr. Lightfoot, good to see you. Welcome to our program. Thanks for having me. And thanks, thank you, uh, CMU, for providing the service to the people in the viewing area. In our first minute or two, we allow each of our candidates to provide some of the background information, um, sort of the personal story of you and uh, the experience that you bring to the campaign. Sure. I'm originally from Saginaw. Um, I spent four years in the U.S. Navy, uh, got out of the Navy in 1979, uh, went to work as an industrial electrician in uh, Saginaw and Bay City area. I was hit by a lot of downtimes uh, in the economy, uh, went from uh, several different uh, plants that had closed or moved to different areas. 
and wound up at um, uh, the Saginaw Fire Department where uh, I retired from um, in 1998 uh, with, a, with a, an injury to my knee. And um, I moved up to the Clare area at that time, um, purchased a, a small business, the Swiss Inn Bar and Grill in, in Lake George, ran it for 20 years, sold it uh, last November. And um, during that time frame also, I, I spent 16 years, 16 of those years as uh, the Freeman Township Supervisor. Mentioned uh, that you're running for the office in District 97. For those that aren't as familiar with the map, the counties, townships, and so forth that make up that district, uh, tell us about that. It's, it's a rather large district. It, it runs from uh, Aranac County, encompasses all of Aranac County, all of Gladwin, all of Clare, and the eastern part of Osceola County. It's about 150 miles from one end to the other. Lots of traveling there. I'm yes, sure lots of yes. doors that you've already uh, knocked on. As you approach this, first as a uh, candidate for this office and then with all the folks that you've met and uh, the questions that you've had with them, uh, what are you identifying as the, the key issues and concerns? You know, a lot of it depends on the age group that I'm talking to, but primarily over and over it, it, it seems to be education, roads, jobs, and, and taxes are, seem to be the four major issues. And specifically, what do they say in terms of uh, the roads and or other related infrastructure? We'll start there. Okay, sure. Our, our roads are in terrible condition. And, you know, Michigan, I don't, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Michigan is a donor state, uh, meaning that for every uh, dollar we send into the federal government, we get 92 cents back. Um, the, the, we send in roughly $60 billion, and um, by increasing that, to me, that, that, that is a, 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 an obvious source of revenue uh, increasing is to uh, lobby the federal government for four, more of that money back. If we increase that to $0.94 cents a, uh, on a dollar, that gives us $1.2 million. If we increase that to $0.95, cents, that's $2 billion, and all that money can go right to the roads. What would your proposal be? Uh, I mean, you, you said to, to try to work with a, but we, We've seen uh, Republican and Democratic governors, uh, Democrat and Republican legislative members, all that have been wanting to get us out of that status. And I've had people try to explain to me before, sitting lawmakers, and, and I'll give you the opportunity as a candidate for this office to explain how, if there's a simple way to understand how that formula works enough to change our status, get us out of being a donor state. Why us, why not others, if all the dollars are, are the same? Dollars going in, how is it that we are a donor state and others are not? A lot of it has to do with federal projects that are, that are slated, whether it's a federal highway project in, in a certain state, uh, whether it's a, a bridge project or things of that nature. Uh, we have several, several bridges in, in, um, um, the, in Michigan that have been on a list for many, many years. Uh, in, in my township alone, there, there have been two bridges that have been taken right off the list because they were on that, on that list for so long and could not receive the funding. Somewhere along the line, we, got, we have to find the ear. I mean, the squeaky wheel gets, gets the grease uh, type of thing, and we have to find out whose ear that is and, and um, get in front of the, the committees that are necessary to uh, increase that funding to us. I mean, it, it's, a, I, it's a nonstop issue. I, I wouldn't stop until I got an absolute no from, from that committee that handles those funds. If roads impact the people that travel into an area um, to enjoy tourism or do business there, if roads impact the people that are trying to do business there, that leads right into jobs and, and the economy as a whole. What are people telling you out, outside of that? What, what would improve the overall jobs and economic climate for the District of 97? I, I'm, a, I'm a small business advocate. I've been involved with small business for, for um, 25 years plus. And one of the things that um, small business need uh, is not uh, less taxes. The tax shift is put, uh, uh, is added to the Hamburg. You know, if, if, uh, if, if um, the, I'll use an example of this latest um, uh, personal property tax that was eliminated. That did not cost business owners a dime. That was passed on to the, 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 the consumer in the form of increased price for, um, for the hamburger or the beer or whatever it is that, that's, that's being served. What small businesses need is more money to, in, the middle, in the hands of the middle class. The only, uh, you can give all the tax breaks in the world to all the businesses in the world and that's not gonna, that's not gonna cause any business to do any hiring. The, the issue that will cause any business to do, to, to do any hiring at all has to do with an increase in the product or uh, uh, the demand for your product or service. 
This, this current administration has taken close to $4 billion a year out of our economy, our already fragile economy, and uh, that's hurt. That's hurt a lot of small businesses. We have lost in the last four years close to 20,000 small businesses in the state of Michigan. We need money in the hands of the people who do the spending. Uh, back in 2006, when the, when the increase in the minimum wage, I, I was scared to death. I mean, I was afraid that uh, nobody was going to come into my business, that they weren't going to, uh, uh, I'd have to raise my prices so much that it would, it would uh, eliminate me from uh, being in business anymore. Uh, ironically, what had happened is um, the, the increase in their m money equated to an increase in my business volume. Those people had more money, they spent more money, and as a result, I had to hire two more people. So the end result is not, not a tax break. The end result is to put money in the hands of the people who do the spending. So what might be some specific ways you would want to go about uh, reversing some of those trends or, or, or changing the, the approach that has been taken then? Um, I, I'm an advocate again of increasing the, the um, minimum wage again. The, uh, the current administration circumvented a, uh, uh, a statewide ballot proposal of 1010 an hour by voting through a 925 an hour that would be implemented over a period of time. Um, while I applaud their, their efforts to increase the, the minimum wage, uh, I don't think it was enough and I, and I think that it should have went to the, uh, to the ballot to let the, the citizens of Michigan decide um, uh, that issue instead of the legislatures. On then the front, uh, roads, jobs, I think education was the, the next on the list that you had uh, mentioned. What are the voters telling you? What would be your proposals in addressing what those concerns may be when it comes to our schools? Uh, both sides both sides have argued um, um, we put a billion dollars in, they took a billion dollars out. I'm not going to get into the semantics of, 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 of who's right and who's wrong in that issue. My, uh, my uh, request is that you check with any school administrator, check with any teacher, check with anybody working in any school system and see if the actual dollars that wound up, uh, that wind up back in the classroom has gone up or gone down in the last four years. Um, we, we have uh, a, a bill that was just passed recently to include uh, skilled trades type um, jobs in, in, uh, in our school systems. Unfortunately, it comes with zero dollars. Uh, all the schools that had these type programs before uh, sold all their equipment. They can't afford to implement these new, these new programs. While the effort there to, uh, uh, to include those in, 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 a, in a school curriculum is, uh, is, should be noted, there's no money available there to um, supplement those. I do encourage a local ordinance, um, uh, uh, a tax, if you will, locally for the schools. Uh, um, um, I, I, I look at ways of uh, um, combining or um, services within a district, whether it be for janitorial services or school bus services or things of that nature. Um, there is no one answer. There is no quick answer to the solution. It has to be studied and, and, and um, looked over, and, and we all have to agree on, on, a, on a solution to this. If it comes down then to, to trying to get more money there, is there something uh, backing up inherently wrong with the funding formula currently in place with Proposal A? And, and I've been asking this for over 10 years now on numerous levels, whether it be a candidate seeking office, those in office, over time, because we're now 20 years out from when that, but Michigan is a vastly different place. Your view on how we pay for schools is, is the funding formula something that we need to address or simply, in the end, trying to allocate more of the funds, as you say? Both, I, I think both issues. You know, proposal A, uh, just like any, any proposal that the state government uh, provides to us, we always seem to come up on the short end with it. And um, proposal A was great when it was initiated that uh, property taxes would stay the way they were. Uh, we'd have an increase in, in sales tax to offset the, uh, the, the property taxes. What wasn't advertised and what wasn't uh, brought forward is the fact that if you sell that property, the cap on, on that property comes off and it jumps up to the current levels. Um, it, um, most properties that have, that have turned over are, are above what, it, what they were um, back in the, at, the, at the passing of Proposal A, and the net result is, is we still have the higher property taxes along with 2% more sales tax. Uh, 
I think it's, it's, it's a fundamental issue with all of state government. We, I, we need to audit every single department. We need to find out where the waste is. We need to determine our priorities or set our priorities. And I think the will of the people is what we should listen to and not the will of, of uh, um, some special interest groups. In the last minute we ha that we have then today, you, you've addressed um, your ideas on, on three major areas. If, if you had to boil all that down and, and the concerns that you've heard to the message you want to leave with the voter as, as he or she gets ready to cast that vote, uh, as a candidate seeking for this office, what would that message be? When I, when I seek a candidate or when I look at a candidate as to who I'm going to vote for, I look at somebody who is close to me. I look at somebody who has uh, some experience in, in the areas that are important to me. And um, when, you, when you compare myself to my opponent, uh, I'm a veteran, I'm a uh, small business owner, I'm an industrial, I, I, I've worked in the shops, I've worked as a boss, I've worked as, uh, with bosses that, that uh, are unfair. Um, I would take a look, ask you to take a look at both candidates and compare how close they are to your needs versus um, the needs of the special interest groups. Well, it's a busy campaign season, certainly for all, and we appreciate you taking the time, as others have too, for coming to the voters, sharing uh, your views for how you would want to approach this office if elected. Uh, thanks very much for your time, and good luck with the rest of the campaign. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And thank you, as always, for your time and attention as well here on Meet the Candidates. We've been talking with Mark Lightfoot, the Democratic candidate for the 97th District House seat uh, in the, this year's election. As always, with all of our guests, our message remains the same. We urge all of you to get out and exercise your right to vote on Tuesday, November 4th. This has been Meet the Candidates, a production of CMU Public Broadcasting. Both major party candidates were invited to participate in this series. For a complete listing of the air dates and times for this series, go to our website, wcmu.org.